This will be the greatest season in MLB history. Go baseball. I am Stephen Russell B, a.k.a. Stephen Russell Baseball. I believe that 2023 was a massive turning point for the sport of baseball. A sport that for years has been fading into obscurity. A national pastime that's past its time for being a relevant sport. But that started to change last year from a combination of two things. The World Baseball Classic and the MLB rule changes. The World Baseball Classic reminded us of the growth of the sport internationally and how they've managed to keep the sport feeling fresh and new. And MLB had a lot of massive rule changes that I think were a very big positive for the sport because it helps it fit better for modern times. Just because something was amazing at one time doesn't mean it's gonna be amazing forever. Sometimes you need to make some modifications. And let's be honest, the game had gotten so slow for decades and it just wasn't as exciting to watch. The lack of innovation in the sport for years kept the sport from feeling as relevant as its counterparts, the NFL NFL and NBA, who both do a better job of mixing pop culture with sports culture. But in today's episode of Go Baseball, we'll talk about the top storylines of this season, then we'll do a preview of each division, including record predictions and award winners, do a question and answer, and then some more final thoughts about this season. Sports are supposed to be for entertainment, and nothing is more entertaining than a compelling storyline. And there are many great ones to follow this year. Starting with a team on everyone's mind, the Dodgers. There's perhaps no bigger story than Otani signing the biggest contract in sports history. $700 million over 10 years. While he's coming off his greatest season, he's never had this type of pressure on him. He has the expectations of the biggest contract in the sport. Plus, he's on a team with much higher expectation than the Angels ever had. But will he live up to this enormous hype? I think he will. When he came to MLB, he was supposed to be a great pitcher. No one said anything about his hitting. Yes, he had some hit tools, but it was not expected that immediately he'd be a great hitter. And now he's in discussion for best hitter in the sport. He also delivered under immense pressure in the World Baseball Classic. While maybe here in the US, the World Baseball Classic isn't the biggest deal, in Japan, it's huge. It's like the Super Bowl. And despite all the pressure, he was fantastic, and Japan won the World Baseball Classic. And it ended with Otani striking out the best player of our generation, Mike Trout. Officially passing off the torch and cementing Otani as the greatest player on the planet. I do think there's going to be some obvious struggles his first year with the Dodgers, but I think he's up to the task. I think he sets new career highs offensively. I think he's a special type of athlete. Oh yeah, and what will happen in the saga with Otani's interpreter, Ipe? And what impact will it have on Otani's legacy? We've also got the Dodgers signing Yamamoto to the largest pitching contract in the history of the sport. $325 million. But that's a 12-year deal. And while I do think Yamamoto is going to deliver huge in his first season, in fact, he is my Cy Young pick for the National League, is he going to be able to do this for a whole decade? Odds are against him. The second half of this contract is probably going to look bad, even if the Dodgers try their best to limit his workload. The reason why I think he's going to be so good is when have we ever seen a pitcher with this much experience, with this dominant of stuff, at this young of an age? And the league hasn't had to face him yet. He's got a lot of big things going for him. Which leads to a really big storyline. Will the Dodgers actually win the World Series this year? They quietly overachieved last year winning 100 games, despite all of their injuries. Well, I don't think they'll break the win record, partially because they don't care as much about the regular season because they know they're going to the playoffs. This is a powerhouse team. I still think they win 100 games. And yeah, I also think they probably will win the World Series. I know money doesn't buy championships, but it can buy an incredible team. And that's what they have on paper. This might very well be the season where we do find out that you can buy championships, especially if you already have a great team. In the American League, the Yankees are in the ultimate win now mode. They're coming off arguably their worst season in 30 years. And they made some very important moves this offseason. Most importantly, they traded for one of the best hitters of this generation. Juan Soto. But after Juan Soto's career got off to one of the greatest starts ever as a hitter, he has not really progressed in the last couple seasons, which is why now he always gets the label as being an overrated player. But while he's been great, I still don't think we've quite seen what he's capable of yet. He wants a bigger deal than the $440 million that the Nationals offered him. And with the move to Yankee Stadium, which tends to fuel offense, I think he legitimately has a chance to have a 500 on base this year, which would make him the first player to do that since Barry Bonds and would put him in true MLB royalty. I don't think he's quite going to do that this year, but he is my American League MVP pick. I think we're about to see the true prime of Juan Soto, especially going into a contract year. Are you kidding me? The Yankees are going to get an incredible season, and I hope the Yankees can re-sign him, but if they don't, he's still going to get over $500 million next offseason. Next, we got the Baltimore Orioles, a team that surprised the baseball community with over 100 wins last year. While this was a talented team, this was way ahead of schedule. From top to bottom, this looks like the next MLB dynasty. Similar to what the Astros have had over the years, let's just hope they can avoid the scandals. They also went out of their way to acquire the one thing they really needed, which was an ace. 
they got Corbin Burns. They look to be a strong contender for the American League East. They've done an incredible job at developing these super high-end players. I have them winning the American League East this season. Next, will the Phillies run ultimately be a disappointment? The Phillies window looks to be closing in the next few years, which means they're running out of time to win a World Series, despite all the money they spent and their superstar talent. With the crazy hype behind Bryce Harper's career being compared to LeBron James, I think a ring would be the one thing to really cement his legacy. It would help him be that mega prospect that truly lived up to those expectations. But it looks like, just like LeBron, his prime years are going to fall during a time where there's a lot of super teams, which is going to make this extremely difficult for him in the Phillies. I don't think the Phillies won the World Series in 2024, but this is how legends are made. In their same division, can the Braves be the greatest offensive team of all time? Last year, you could make the argument that that was the greatest offensive team of all time. Tied the home run record, and they broke the slugging percentage record. And honestly, I think they can do it again, and even better this year. Yes, a lot of things had to go right for them last year to achieve those ridiculous numbers, but they brought back all the same players, and they're all still in their prime. I don't know why they couldn't do it again, if not even better this season. But if we're going to talk about a lot of really good teams, let's talk about some teams that need to bounce back this year. Some other teams that have some pressure on them. These include the Mariners, the Padres, and the Cardinals. Let's talk about the Padres first. They spent a bunch of money last offseason, and then they weren't a good team. They knew this was their window. So they tried to get Trey Turner, they tried to get Aaron Judge, neither of them worked, so instead they ended up signing Xander Bogarts for 11 years. And while he's a really good player, this contract is not looking good. I didn't feel good about it at the time, I still don't feel good about that contract. And now this season, they don't have Juan Soto because they traded him away. It's very difficult to see how this team's going to be better for this season, even after acquiring Dylan Cease. That said, they're still very talented and they were awful in the clutch last year. I still think they could win around the same amount of games as last year and maybe go slightly over 500. But I think overall, this Padres super team is likely to go down as a failed experiment. Next, we got the Mariners, who actually had a pretty good record last year. And I feel pretty good about them in 2024 as well. They're pitching is really good and I think it's going to be even better this season. The bigger question mark is their offense, but I think it'll be good enough to still make them a playoff team, especially if we get an MVP caliber season out of Julio Rodriguez, who I think is totally capable of going 40-40 this season. And yeah, we got the Cardinals, arguably the most disappointing team in MLB last year because they were never good. And a lot of people expected them to win the division. I don't like their offseason. I don't really like their rotation pieces. Yes, I like Sonny Gray, but Kyle Gibson and Lance Lynn, I just don't get excited about these players. I think their rotation struggles again, and I don't think their offense is going to be enough to overcome. It. Though, I do think that Jordan Walker will take a big step forward as a hitter. He honestly was pretty decent as a rookie. I don't have much to say about the Mets. I don't think they're good this year. I think this is a transition season. They were the other really disappointing team. Now, a team we haven't talked about are the Rangers. Team that won the World Series last year. Can they repeat? There's not been a World Series repeat team since 2000. But this Rangers team is very good. And I do like the idea that Scherzer and DeGrom will join the team later in the season. They can be a good team up to that point and then make the playoffs. Hands down, going to be one of the best rotations. I love Wyatt Langford. I love the young talent on this team. I think this team definitely has a chance to repeat. However... I doubt it'll happen because it's just so tough. Staying in their same division, I think the Astros are going to be super interesting. They barely won the division last year. When is this dynasty run going to be over? I think they're still going to be super great this season, but we're getting towards the end of that dynasty run. This might be the last season of that run, which is why I really think they're going to go all out and this team is going to be really good again this year. It's hard to count them out to win the division. It's also very weird that that division does not have Otani anymore. Angels made a bunch of moves to try to make one more run with Otani on their roster and it just did not work out. In the process, they really tore apart their future. I don't see them being a competitive team anytime soon. Luckily, they still have Mike Trout and the Angels fans definitely want to see a playoff team. So all we can do is hope that Trout can stay healthy and Rendon can stay healthy. Well, Rendon also has to kind of care about baseball again. And how about the San Francisco Giants? They look to be playoff relevant again because they had a very good offseason. I'm still not totally sold. And the Brewers, on sort of the opposite side of things, had a terrible offseason. Trade away Corbin Burns. Now Devin Williams is hurt. Things are not looking good for that organization. The Royals and Tigers seem to have a bright future with a lot of really good young players. I'm not as sure about the Cleveland Guardians' future right now. I like some of the things that we're doing. I think our pitching is going to be really good. I've just got question marks on our offense. And just generally speaking, I'm really excited about this new wave of young players. Jackson Churio, Jackson Holiday, Wyatt Langford, James Wood, just to name a few. There's also the Oakland A's, a team with no home that's probably going to be moving to Las Vegas in a few years. 
What's that team gonna look like? The whole situation over the next few years is gonna be super entertaining to watch. But Oakland A's fans, I am wishing you all the best of luck. On to the division previews. Starting in the American League, I think the Baltimore Orioles are the best team in the American League on paper, which is why I had them finishing at the top of the American League East, going 98 and 64. Adley Rushman, I think, can be a top five MVP candidate, and Corbin Burns is my Cy Young pick. And what I think was one of the best moves of the offseason. A great young core will be one year older. This team is stacked. And I think players like Grayson Rodriguez will take a step forward. Next, the Yankees. I have them finishing 91 and 71. We need to stop being so down on the Yankees. I know they underachieved last year, but pretty much everything went wrong last year and they had a great off season. I think they can win enough games even with the Garrett Cole injury to still make the playoffs. Though I will admit the Garrett Cole injury does make me a bit uneasy with this prediction, but they're a well above average lineup in my eyes and they're pitching this probably around average. And I think it could be better. They can win 91 games. Next, just behind them, I have the Blue Jays going 90 and 72. I've kind of lost faith in this Blue Jays window. Well, I still think they make a strong run, I think they come up just short of a playoff spot. They're going to rely on their pitching again, and if it falls short, this team's offense I don't think is enough, even if Vlad Guerrero Jr. plays like an MVP this season. Next, I have the Rays going 86 and 76. This team was building a future around Wander Franco, and now they're obviously not. But there's also no Shane McClanahan and no Tyler Glass now. Their rotation looks mediocre, and I don't think their offense will be quite as good this season. I know they always prove me wrong, but I really don't think they're a playoff team for this year. And in last place in the American League East, not a bad team, but I think the Red Sox are 77 and 85. I think they will be a good offensive team. They don't have enough pitching to compete in my eyes. If they make some moves during the season, this could be one of the teams that surprises us. Because I think their offense could carry an average pitching staff. On to the American League Central, the division of sadness. I think there's exactly one good team in this division. Vision. And that team is the Minnesota Twins, who I have going 87 and 75. But I think there's a chance they could win even more games than this. This is one of my favorite teams in a while. I like their offense. I like their pitching. I think from top to bottom, it's a very solid team. Up next, I've got my Cleveland Guardians going 76 and 86. Cleveland starts a three-team tier where I think all the teams are pretty equal. I think they could finish in any order. But I do think the Guardians are the safest pick of these teams. They should pitch well again, but the team needs to work on continuing to improve the offense. Next, the Royals. I have them going 71 and 91. I think they're going to be one of the most improved teams over last season. But last season, they were atrocious. They should hit much better this season. I think Vinny Pasquantino is going to mash for them. Bobby Wood Jr. is a star in the making, and I like their offseason acquisitions. Even their pitching could surprise us a bit with someone like Cole Reagans, who looked really good last year. Next, I have the Detroit Tigers going 70 and 92. They have some talent on this team, but we need to see them hit their potential. Guys like Spencer Torkelson and Riley Green. Will they take steps forward? Can someone like Javi Baez bounce back? And perhaps most importantly, will their pitching live up to their potential? Because there is a lot of talent there. And in last place, the Chicago White Sox going 62 and 100. This is not a good team. Luis Robert is a superstar though. I'm just hoping this team can stay healthy and maybe they'll surprise me and win 70. Under the American League West, I have three playoff teams coming from this division. At the top, I have the Texas Rangers winning the division at 96 and 66. Rangers and Astros are both very close to me, but Wyatt Langford making the Rangers starting lineup day one is huge for them. It gave them the slight edge in my eyes. I went back and forth between them and the Astros, but this is actually the reason I put them one game ahead. They have an awesome lineup, and by the time they get to the playoffs, hopefully they have a healthy Scherzer and DeGrom, which would give them one of the best rotations in the game. Next, the Houston Astros at 95 and 67. They're still an awesome team. And then they added Josh Hader to the bullpen. And obviously their offense looks great. It's really just a matter of how good their rotation is. Justin Verlander's health has been a concern. He needs to stay healthy. And they're going to need a bounce back from someone like Christian Javier. Or a step forward from someone like Hunter Brown. Neither of which would be crazy. Then I have the Mariners going 92 and 70. I am a little bit worried about their lineup. But they might have the best pitching staff in the American League. I also think there's a chance their lineup could surprise us a bit. Adding someone like Mitch Hanniger, what if he bounces back? And Julio Rodriguez is a future MVP. Next, I have the Angels at 68-94. I really think this team is just bad now. Because they were already pretty bad when they had Otani. And now without him, they should be even worse. And I don't see them being good anytime soon either. But I do think some of their pitchers will pitch a bit better this year than last year. And let's hope Mike Trout can stay healthy. And Anthony Rendon can care at all about baseball. And then in last place, no surprise, at 58-104, and 104, the Oakland A's. I just feel bad for this team. I do think they'll be better than last year, though. They've got an okay lineup. I just don't know what to expect from their pitching. For my American League Award winners, I've got Juan Soto winning MVP. I've got Corbin Birds winning the Cy Young Award. Ian Langford winning Rookie of the Year. For comeback player, initially I went with Carlos Correa, but, but I also predicted John Carlos Stan would bounce back this season, so I think it could be either of them. If I have to pick, I'll stick with Correa, but one of my bold predictions this year is John Carlos Stan with a 40 home run bounce back season. If he does that, 
He's the comeback player. And for my reliever of the year, Josh Hader. On to the National League. The National League East is top heavy in my eyes. At the very top, I have the Braves going 104 and 58. I have the Braves basically repeating what they did last year. I think on paper, they're a little bit better, but it's just so hard to predict a team winning more than 104 games. I think they have a strong case for the best team in MLB. I love the Chris Sale acquisition, and they're going to be one of the best offenses again this season. Next, the Philadelphia Phillies. I have them going 97 and 65. Somehow they always win less games than we predict, but presumably Harper is entering the season healthy, unlike last season. I think Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler will likely pitch better than last season, and I just don't see many flaws on their roster. I think they win a bunch of games. Next, I have the Mets at 76 and 86. I like their offense, especially now with J.D. Martinez in their lineup, but I think their pitching rotation is going to be very bad. I'm nervous about Kodai Senga's injury. I don't know how he's going to bounce back. I'm actually pretty confident that Luis Severino will be good. I just don't trust the rest of their pitching staff. Next, I have the Marlins going 70 and 92. I think their pitching will probably surprise us and be pretty good again even if we don't get to see Yuri Perez this year. But taking Jorge Soler out of this lineup was not great. Without him, their lineup is just okay, if not kind of bad. I don't think they're a bad team, but they're nothing special. And in last place, I have the Washington Nationals going 65 and 97. Their lineup's not great, and their pitching looks really bad. CJ Abrams is the most interesting player on this team. There's a scenario this season where he goes 20-60. I just don't see many ways where this team's gonna surprise us. On to the National League Central. Both the Central divisions do not look good again this year. But winning the Central, I have the Reds going 86 and 76. This is the hype team in the division to me. A super fun lineup and rotation. It's easy to see a scenario where their lineup is above average and their pitching is above average. Though they're definitely dealing with some injuries right now, so this team could fall apart real quick. They have some room for error though because no team in this division looks that great to me. In second place, I have the Cubs going 81 and 81. I don't understand the Cubs hype. To me, they're the definition of an average team on paper. An average lineup and average pitching. I think Seiya Suzuki is going to have a much better season this year, but overall, I'm not bought into the lineup or the pitching staff. But this division is bad, so they could probably still compete. In third place, I have the Pirates going 73 and 89. This is a team that's on the rise. I'm super excited to see this offense. I think Brian Hayes takes a step forward. I think O'Neal Cruz is going to be really fun if he can stay healthy, and I think he'll be really good. And hopefully we see a step forward from Henry Davis. Their lineup could be pretty solid, and their pitching isn't great, but it's not terrible. And once Paul Skeens gets called up, this could be a solid team. Next, I have the St. Louis Cardinals going 72 and 90. I already talked about them a bit. I just don't think this team is that good. I don't like their offseason acquisitions. I think their pitching is going to struggle, and I don't think their offense is going to be enough to make this team that good. It's an above average hitting lineup with bad pitching. That's the way I see it. But in last place, I had the Milwaukee Brewers going 68 and 94. I'm sorry, but this team is going to be much worse this season. Offensively, they are unimpressive, but they could probably be average. But they're pitching, trading away Corbin Burns, and now losing Devin Williams with an injury for a big part of this season, it's not looking good. And if this team starts to go downhill, I think they're going to trade away players like Willie Adames. Jackson Churio will be fun though. But once again, it's a bad division. You could be a bad team and still win more games than I think. And lastly, we have the National League West. There's a lot of solid teams in this division, but the Dodgers are the clear best team. I have them finishing 102 and 60. Right up there with the Braves is the best team in MLB. And I went back and forth with that, but I think the Dodgers division's a little tougher, so I don't think they're going to win quite as many games. There's a lot of pressure, but I think this team will coast to 100 wins this year. Next, I have the Arizona Diamondbacks going 88 and 74. I think they're quite a step down from the Dodgers, but they are a playoff team again. Solid pitching and solid hitting. Their lineup looks improved with Jock Peterson and A. Eugenio Suarez. And if Eduardo Rodriguez can stay healthy, I think he'll be a good addition too. Those were some solid pieces to add. In third place, I have the Giants going 85 and 77. A great offseason had me continuously raising them on my power rankings. In the end, I actually have them in the last playoff spot, which I think is totally up for grabs. I think their lineup's unspectacular, but much improved. And while I do have concerns with Blake Snell, there's still a lot to like here. And I think we'll probably see some more home runs from this team, which is something they've definitely been needing. In fourth place, I have the Padres going 83 and 79. Never a great offseason when you lose Juan Soto and the National League Cy Young winner, but they still have some talent, and I really like the Dylan Cease acquisition. I think them and the Giants will battle it out for a playoff spot. But in last place in the West, at 63 and 99, I have the Colorado Rockies, the worst team in the National League. I don't anticipate them winning many more games from last year, but if Chris Bryan can stay healthy and with the full season of Nolan Jones, maybe they won't lose 100. For my award winners, I have Acuna winning MVP, Yamamoto winning Cy Young, Yamamoto winning Rookie of the Year, comeback player, I've got Walker Bueller, and reliever of the year, I've Camilo Doval. Now on to Q&A. Thank you to those who wrote in. Start with something simple. Who do I have winning the World Series? I have the Dodgers over the Orioles. Very close, though. I almost picked Braves over Orioles. I know it's obvious, but those are the two teams. And I do think Baltimore has a chance. Next, should Jackson Holiday have made the Orioles opening day roster? 100% yes. He's better than players that are currently on their roster. And they're trying to compete this season. He's going to bring fans to the game, and he makes the team better. Unquestionably, he should have made the team. I cannot stand when teams do this. And most annoying fan base. There was only one correct 
answer. Yes, to me, there is only one correct answer. It's whatever team is beating my team. If you've got a rival team for that season, those fans are always gonna be the worst. My final thoughts for this upcoming season. Most importantly, MLB looks to be gaining popularity. Games were 24 minutes shorter in 2023 than they were in 2022. It was a different experience. Let's take a look at those numbers. Comparing the games in 2023 to 2022. Runs per game jumped from 8.6 to 9.2. That's positive, I think. I think fans like when there's more scoring. Stolen base rate jumped from 1.0 to 1.4 per game. And the stolen base success rate was 80.2%, the best in the history of MLB. The result of all of this was attendance up 9.6% from 2022. I have never been more excited for an MLB season. And there's plenty of other stuff I didn't even cover today. Thank you for watching and listening. We will see you next time. And as always, go baseball.